let's give the AI a physics test. I'm gonna give it 10 multiple choice questions. Stay tuned for the final score. Question one, an athlete is running at a speed of five meters per second. What is a reasonable estimate for the kinetic energy of this athlete? So let's paste this into chat GPT. Now that's really interesting. It's chosen the wrong answer, B, whereas the correct answer, assuming a mass of around 70 kilograms, is C, around 900 joules. This is not a particularly difficult question, so I'm quite surprised that Chad GPT did not get that correct. Hi guys, that's me editing. I decided to investigate this further. Have a look at this. It's actually calculated the correct answer to be 875 joules, but then for some reason it's chosen a reasonable estimate of around 100 joules. Kind of strange. Question two, which pair of quantities have the same base SI units? That's really interesting, wrong again. So it's saying that force and stress have the same units. However, stress is also force per unit area. The correct answer here is C, pressure and stress. I'm generally quite surprised it's getting these wrong. Okay, next one, a tennis ball is hit with a racket. The force applied by the racket on the ball is F. The ball has a vertical path through the air. Which statement is correct when the ball is at its maximum height? Let's copy that into chat GPT. Perfect, we have our first correct answer. The ball has a downward acceleration. The correct answer is A. I really like how it's giving some explanations to it. Next one, this one is about gravitational forces and it's fairly mathematical question. So we have the gravitational force between two point mass objects is F1. Then we halve the distance, meaning that the force will increase by a factor of two squared, which is four. Which statement about the new gravitational force between the two objects is correct, assuming that we have also increased the mass of x? Once again, it is correct. I do really like how it's providing explanation for why uh, it's chosen that answer to be correct. What I am worried about though is if it did get this question wrong and provided the wrong explanation, if you didn't know the correct answer, it would be impossible for you to tell whether this was right or wrong. Next one. This one is all about converting Hubble's constant to SI units written to two significant figures. So let's see how it does. Oh, it's taking its time on this one. Once again, it is correct. It seemed to do pretty well on purely mathematical questions, but not so much on uh, estimates or where there might be some ambiguity in actual words given in the question. I'm really curious how it's gonna do on this next one. I remember setting this question at an exam and not that many people got this one correct because there is a trick to that question. Okay, let's see whether we'll catch the trick in this question. It's computing, it's doing some physics, and it's gotten it wrong, I'm afraid. B is not actually the correct answer. It's failing to take into account that there's going to be bright spots on either side of the central maximum, producing a total number of 11 bright spots that are visible. Next one about the stretching of a spring. I really like this question because it involves manipulating a couple of different equations to try and get the relationship between the elastic potential energy and the mass that is hanging on the spring. Let's see how it does. The correct answer is that E is proportional to M squared. Let's see if it's going to get it. And it's computing. Fantastic! It managed to get this question correct. It also seems to be giving us a really good explanation of how it actually got there. Next one is about units in astronomy. Which one of the following distances is the largest? I'm expecting that it's going to do this very, very quickly. Let's have a look. What? It got this one wrong? I thought this would be one of the easiest questions for it to get right. The correct answer is B. However, it seems to have chosen A and it seems to have given us a uh, completely different reasoning. Right, AI, I'm a little bit disappointed. What if I ask it to try again? Try again the last question and let's be nice, please. 
Oh, let's see whether it's going to get the correct answer second time round. Whoa, that's amazing. It actually got the correct answer B second time round. Okay, this next question, I'll be very impressed if it manages to get it correctly. Adding up the rules of percentage uncertainties and experiments is quite tricky. Whoa, it's gotten this one correct. I'm genuinely impressed with this. It's also giving us the rule of multiplying fractional uncertainties. Okay, question number 10, which is very wordy and it's about the kinetic theory of gases. Let's see how it does. And it's gotten the correct answer pretty much straight away. So the AI has scored around six out of 10 or around 60%, which is probably around a B grade. You can have quite a lot of fun with the AI. And if you're stuck on a question, it might give you a starting point of where to go to, but I wouldn't trust it hundred percent. As you can see, it got some fairly basic stuff wrong and other more complicated stuff right straight away. If you would like to see one of the hardest exams that I've personally taken, have a look at this video right over here.